this installment in this series on how to bend PVC, we'd like to get a little bit more into applications for why this is actually cool for, in this case, an electrician. And we'll get into other trades as well, as well as just people in general, why this thing is so freaking cool. Now, in electrical applications, when you're running conduit around, and it's always tempting to just show around this room, there is conduit everywhere in here. This is a warehouse. You end up, when you hit, especially in a building like this where it's an iron structure, you end up hitting these points where you've got to move your conduit around a bunch of crap. And the general way to do that has been using one of those conduit vendors, which works pretty well. I mean, I have to say an advantage over this is that it's faster. But honestly, sometimes it's hard to make two bends along the same axis. Like if you're doing a 45 followed by another 45, you're just trying to move around something it can be a really difficult trick to actually make that happen or you'll end up, your stuff will look kind of wonky and I can point to conduits all over this building that are like that. Where they did a good job, it's standard, I mean it's what people expect from it. Nobody's ever looking too close so it doesn't really matter but at the same time you know you can see those roller marks in the conduit from the bender and all of that. Those are things that I just like to show a way to avoid. Now all I'm doing here is a six inch offset. This is just to give you the rough idea and you can do uh, you can do anything you want. You know, we're about to turn this pipe into a cooked spaghetti noodle. So once it's there, you're good. And that's really cool because, like I say, the form I've got is a very simple one. But following this principle of things like it, you can get those weird spots where you're like running up a wall, and then you got a fat beam, and you got to get around it, and then go past. And you can do all of those in a single bend. So instead of having to take your conduit bender. Move, do it, move it, do it in the opposite direction, move it, and keep doing that. And then you end up having a little bit of trouble keeping a straight line. Here, it's going to come down in a straight line because I've got it on a flat form. And even if so on this one, I'm just going to do a single offset. If I had to do, like, say I'm looking at the wall here at one that's got one, two, three bends in the same offset, that would be very, very easy to do. It's the same type of forming. You just make it as involved as you need it. So anyway, here is how it's done. For this one, I'm using 3 quarter inch Schedule 40. Now even though this isn't that UV resistant conduit stuff, those bend exactly the same. We just don't have any of it in the shop right now, or else that's what I'd be using. And I chose 3 quarter inch just because I'm looking at it all around me all day, every day. And you can do this on larger sizes of conduit. There's really no limit to what you can do here. Or well, there's limits, but there's limitations of the material. So anyway, take this. In this case, three quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC. Drop it on the bender. Close your bend station. I forgot my clip, so it's going to pop, but that's okay. The fact is, this pipe is small enough that even if I didn't close these in any way, it wouldn't matter. It's still going to get ready really quick. So make sure, as always, you know, find a way to entertain yourself that's right next to your bender. And I don't recommend playing video games or something because you might get a little too much into the game and lose it. I don't recommend doing much of anything, honestly. Just stay in the area and make sure you can come back and keep checking. Also in the process, you're gonna to wanna to rotate the pipe every so often. Now, since this is an electrical conduit, what I'm showing, it doesn't matter. You can barbecue the inside and as long as the pipe can fit through or the wire can fit through the pipe and be protected, that's all you really want. So, I'm going to wait a few minutes and then it'll be ready to go. Okay. Make sure to put gloves on before you take a pipe off the bender. I will say this a million times and I will say this because I have burned myself and it's not cool. So make sure, make sure, make sure to put your gloves on before you take the pipe off. Now, this is going to be kind of tricky because I got my form out of the shot. So here's how we do it. This is the six inch, six inch offset form right here. It's gonna come this way, and here is how it's done. I'll hold it back up in a sec so you can see. 
take the pipe off the bender, of course. Lay it down into the form. And here we have a perfect six inch offset for conduit. Kind of collapse that in, I like the flowing curve a little more. So that's all you gotta do. If I had six different bends on this, I can just use a longer form. Like what I've got here is a nine foot bender, which means that I can do this kind of work on nine feet of conduit at any one time. And we're developing an 18 foot model. It's not on the market yet, and we're not even gonna do a limited release until we're until we got a really nice one. The rest that we've got, we're totally confident in and we'd like people to start using now. So, just to hurry this up, I'm gonna hit it with a wet sponge here, cool it off. You can also, if you have an air compressor and a gun, just use your gun, stick it in the end of the pipe and blow it out real quick. Works great, works really great. And the combination of a wet sponge and the gun, you can have your pipe cooled in 15, 20 seconds. So. I've got a floppy end on this one because I'm not actually gonna use this as an electrical conduit. This is just to show how it's done. And of course, if you take the, this was quick, you know, this form took me 25 seconds to put together. I struck down a straight line measured my offset and then made guides for the pipe to fit in and that was that but naturally if you take a little more time and if you're actually going to use it you still it's not going to take you more than a few seconds to put your form together but then you're ready to boogie so i don't want to jump the gun here but kind of do actually. Here, I'm just going to take this out of the frame here. We don't need this anymore. So here we have two bends, six inch offset. This would get you around an I-beam or will get you around something that you can't put a hole in. And it ends a little wiggly, that's because my form sucked. If you make a good form, you're going to have a good bend in the end. The nice thing is, you look, that's a straight line. That's actually straighter than this pipe was before I started. If you heat it up, it's completely malleable, and when you shape it, you get what you make out of it. So in this case, if I really wanted to use it, I would probably just cut it about here and then go from there. But you see the general principle, and you can apply this to tons of conduit applications. You can go all the way out to two inch, you can bend up to four inch with this system, but you know, you're not running that kind of conduit too often, so it's not that important for you to actually worry about. But up to two inch, it goes really easy, and you can make those offsets in 90 degree corners. You know, what it allows you to do is it allows you to basically just buy pipe and straight couplings, and instead of having to buy those pre-bent uh, fittings and sections of conduit and all that stuff, you can just leave that out and you can do your own bending and that means you'll cut on material cost all in all and if you're billing by the hour hey, <laughs> if you're not it still gives you a better finish in the end i have to recommend it very strongly to anybody and that's about all there is to say about it you use your imagination your creativity and you'll be able to make this work in your work environment very easily